You're listening to the Living Inside Out podcast, and I'm your host, Tox Aruture. This is episode nine. Welcome to the Living Inside Out podcast, where we are about to unearth some bad mindsets. Episode nine is Lies We Believe, Exposing the Mindsets That Limit Growth. How are you? Me, I'm getting ready to reopen the shop after a long three months of working from home. And I currently have a mix of emotions because you see, this season of quietness, recalibration, family time has done me a world of good. But I'm also looking forward to seeing how my new lifestyle will mesh with work. My new lifestyle really is the fact that I have uprooted some things from my life. And now that I've had a taste of a stress-free business lifestyle, that's what I want, guys. That's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm working towards. As a matter of fact, that has become my goal. I want to live life without stress because it's so much better. You know, I know that it is impossible to go through life without challenges and I'm not not looking for challenges. I'm not saying that I don't want to have a life that's free from problems because it's not practical and being human is part of what happens. Uh, should I say challenges is what part of what happens when you're a human being. But I do think that while we can't control what's going on around us, we can at least control how we respond to it. So that's what I'm practicing at the moment. And I will keep you posted. In a previous episode, I shared about a season where I began to explore the source of my thoughts. And I'm saying this and I'm thinking, did I share? I hope I did. I think I did. Anyway, I went through a season where I began to question where my thoughts were coming from. Because I believe all our thoughts have a source and the sources are either internal or external. External sources are pretty obvious, you know, the conversations, what you're repeatedly told or what you repeatedly hear, um, what you read frequently, or should I say the sort of material you read, the music you listen to, the news, social media, all of that are external sources of information. But then there are also the internal sources, and we tend to lump them all into one avenue. And we just say, it came from my mind. You know, have you ever said, my mind told me this wouldn't work, or my mind told me to check the microwave or oven or whatever. But even within the mind, there are several points of entry. For example, through your spirit, which is one with God. Another source of our thoughts is our mindsets. And I like to describe mindset as what you get when you repeatedly layer the same information or a particular piece or bit of information in your mind so that it becomes the floor or the surface from which new thoughts then grow from. I attended a military boarding school in the north of Nigeria. Okay, when I say military, <laughs> we're not exactly talking about being prepped to join the army. It was a school set up for the children of military officers. So we had a very regimented life and our life started at 5 a.m. every morning and ended at 10. I think on Sundays we slept in till 6, but it always ended at 10. Allow me to set the scene for you. Just a little bit, hammer turn. Hmm. That's a climate I never heard of until I lived in Kaduna State. It is cold in the mornings and dry and hot and dusty in the afternoon. Come to think of it, I might even have had allergies because I just remember being so uncomfortable and hammer turn was just such an unpleasant and unnecessary climate. 
So imagine having to wake up so early and jump straight into what was called your morning piece of work. And then there were the seniors to contend with. Those ones were so lazy that they would call you from two hostels away to come and pick up the cop that lay at the foot of their bed. So as juniors, we doubled as servants. And let's not even get into the food. And boarding house turned out to be vastly different from what I thought it would be. And nothing prepared me for general work. (laughs) Every Thursday, we had to do manual labor. Sometimes it was done for punishment, like if we came last, or let's just say you didn't come first in house inspections. House inspections were done every Saturday. There were four houses in total, and everybody was supposed to come first. And if you didn't get first, you didn't come first, then you will be punished. At other times, the labor was done because it needed doing. But it wasn't all negative. I met some of my closest friends till date and any shred of resilience that I have today, I can say I got it from Command Secondary School Kaduna without a doubt. This was also where I had my first experience of horticulture amongst so many other activities. And we had to dig up flower beds I even remember the day I was told to dig up my first flower bed. I didn't even know what that was. And I looked at the flat piece of ground and thought, how can a mound of earth come from this ground? But all that messing about with the soil made me understand that the ground was made up of layers. There was the nice and soft soil that lay on the surface. That was quite easy to dig. And then there was the harder, pebble ridden one that lay beneath. Another task we had to do was regularly water the plants, obviously, so they wouldn't die. And after a few weeks of daily watering, plus, you know, the soil being baked in the hot hammertan sun, that soft soil slowly became hardened and the plants were no longer at risk from being easily pulled out or kicked or toppled or whatever. Sometimes we were asked to mix in manure or some other compost to help with the, the growth of the plants and compost, as you know, is animal or plant waste. Well, not plant waste, but decompose leaves and stems and vegetables and so on. The mind is a piece of land with thoughts growing from its soil. And when a statement is repeatedly received by the mind, it eventually becomes the compost that will now help new thoughts to grow. So I describe a mindset as what you get when you repeatedly sprinkle the same words over and over on the floor of your mind until it is sufficient to, you know, anchor the root of a plant. With time, that soil becomes hardened and anything you throw on it, any seed that goes onto it will take root and it will grow. And then over time, the plants just start growing by themselves in the context of our minds. You don't need to receive the information any longer. The thoughts just show up without warning and effort. And this works for healthy and harmful information. So today I'm going to share three mindsets that I uncovered and the truths that helped me kick each one to the curb. These were mindsets that were holding me back. One day I was dealing with some doubt, some self-doubt about myself. I don't even remember exactly which one it was this time, but I just said out loud, I said out loud this statement, it's not supposed to be this way. Now, what surprised me was that I had never thought about those words. I had never even considered or even believed that things were wrong, you know, but with time I unpacked the truth of where that came from. It was Betty's words. Name change. (laughs) At the time, I used to spend a lot of time with someone that had that sentence on repeat. She was a business owner herself, but her business just wasn't growing the way that she expected it to. As a Christian, she believed God had a different plan for her, and this one certainly wasn't it. Her business was struggling and she had a lot of faith and she had belief that she would eventually get what she wanted. But 
The problem was that she kept saying that where she was was not where she was supposed to be because she was comparing where she was with where she imagined she should have been polar opposites. Here's why it isn't supposed to be this way is a dream killer of a mindset. Because if it's not supposed to be this way, your brain goes to work trying to pivot to a different direction and it carries on trying until it figures out the right way, whatever that right way is. And anything that you repeatedly hear, whether you're hearing it from someone else or you're saying it to yourself, you'll eventually believe it. I believe we've all been assigned our own set of challenges and these challenges lie sprinkled all over our path, literally from the beginning of life to the very end. And some areas may have more stones or rubble than others. And if you keep trying to find a smooth spot every time you hit a rough one, you'll head over in a different direction. But then every path has its challenges. And before you know it, you're back where you started. Because in all the years that I knew Betty, she faced the same problems. She'll get out of it only to return. I firmly believe that if you don't make the change that your journey is demanding of you, you'll end up returning to the same spot to face the same challenge. It's a bit like trying to get from North London to South London, but insisting that you can do it without crossing the River Thames. You must go through a bridge or a tunnel, but you have to go through water or go across water. If you've led yourself or someone has led you to believe things are not supposed to be this way for you, you need to scrape off that mindset because it has become the layer from which all your thoughts and your actions will grow from. And episode five, I talked about the principle of intention. And do you remember that I said that it's not what you desire, what you dream about, what you want that happens. It's what you intend. And if you're standing on the same spot, intending to travel on a different path from where you're on, that's what's going to happen. But you're going to get off the path that leads to your dream and you're not going to arrive there. The reason we focus on mindset as opposed to individual thoughts is this. The mindset is the topsoil, if you like, and any seeds that land on it will grow. So if you uproot just one plant, you still have more plants that are growing. You know, there's more to it than unbelieving a single thought. It's not going to change how you think because your thoughts still come from the same soil. Besides, scientists have told us that the average man has 70,000 thoughts per day. So where do you even begin? It's better to remove the layer on which these thoughts grow than to attempt to uproot them individually. So here's how I unbelieved the lie of it's not supposed to be this way. I was at a networking event and ran into an old friend and, you know, we chit-chatted and she asked, how's business? And my response was, it's tough. And I wasn't saying that to be pessimistic or to be negative or grouchy. I said it honestly because as far as I was concerned, I was being authentic. Authentic people tell it like it is. We're bold. We're upfront. <laughs> At this time, it was quite clear that I had become quite militant in this whole authenticity thing and probably last, lacked a bit of balance as well. But I went away and asked myself, as I often do, why did you say that, Tox? What was it that made you say business was tough. Now, the question was not one of those that, you know, you ask yourself, you you feel the need to ask yourself or you're kicking yourself and saying, I shouldn't have said that. It wasn't like I was embarrassed about my answer or I thought I said the wrong thing. I just genuinely wanted to know what the source of that information was. Where did it come from? Because I truly believe that our thoughts are unspoken words. So I must have been thinking it. And here's the pep talk that I had with myself. What if this is exactly how it's supposed to be? What if running a business is made up of really hard parts 
and really enjoyable parts. And then I took it a step further and I asked, what if I was assured by, hmm, let's say the patron saint of businesses, and I'm sure there is one, I just don't know his name, or that I was somehow told by God that what I was going through in my business was exactly what I was supposed to go through, that it was part of the journey to get to where I had imagined I could get to. What would I do if I got that assurance? And my answer was simple. I'll carry on. I'll do my best and I'll grow my business. And the answer, capital T, capital A, finally came. So why don't you just do that now? The second lie we believe is the one that I call if only dash 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 then dash dash dash. This is the lie that tells you all the reasons why you don't have the success that you want. It's the one where you compare yourself to Kelly, the girl with the doting husband that you just know if you had a husband like hers, the sky would be your limit. Or when you just know that Ashley's happiness is due to the fact that she doesn't have the problems you do. And if you had her business success and her confidence and her experience, then you two would be unstoppable. Well, here's the thing. You have everything that you're supposed to have inside you. You arrived on earth with it. The if only then mindset will have you chasing the things that you're convinced you need instead of simply following your own path. A single woman who believes her unhappiness will be resolved by a husband will focus on the search of Mr. Wright when he may even have been hidden in the distance by the pile of rubble that's standing in front of her. Recently, my husband and I were watching a pre-recorded rerun of the sitcom Frasier. I love Frasier and it doesn't matter how many times I watch any episode, I enjoy it all over again as though it's my first time. So there was a break between episodes which cut into a segment, you know, that was talking about COVID-19 and it brought back memories of, well, March, three months ago let's say February, when it all, you know, when we first started hearing about it or started to get concerned about it, it brought back memories of when it all started. I recalled the fear that was just hanging in the air. I recalled my thoughts and my concerns about my family in Nigeria and also my determination to keep my household safe. I've got teenage sons, And I was ready, boxing gloves on, because I knew it was going to be a battle to keep them indoors. But thankfully, they have been the best, the sweetest kids ever. I also remembered my prayers and conversations with friends and family and filtering the ones that I was not going to talk to during this season. Because, you know, there are people who just convince you there's no point waking up in the morning because everything is just so dire. So you want to stay away from those kinds of people when everyone else around you is freaking out because they can affect you. But watching this bit of news in the second week of June gave me a whole new perspective because the fear of COVID is obviously a lot lower now than it was back in March. And there are people who spent the last three months quaking in fear waiting for the inevitable to happen, glued to the news and making plans based on the worst that they told us. And today they're absolutely fine. Now, I am not in any way demeaning or should I say devaluing or playing down the seriousness of that disease and I acknowledge the fact that it literally has changed the lives of many people around the world. I mean, it's changed all our lives, but there are some people who were affected in the sense that they sadly lost family members. I'm not playing down that experience or saying that they didn't have a um, reason to quake in fear. 
But my point is that for those people who nothing negative happened to and had a lot that they could have done in that three month period, but chose not to because, you know, they were waiting for the worst to happen. Nothing can be done about the three months that's gone now. And when I say could have done stuff, it's anything from starting a new business and a hobby to simply just chilling out, reconnecting with family, discovering a stress-free life, which is exactly what I did. You know, when I went through my stormy season, I said a lot of if onlys. If only I could redo the few months before the recession. If only I had done this, that or the other. I found such fantasies to be really good at helping me escape my harsh reality, but really bad at making my dreams come true. If only then, as a mindset, keeps you tethered to the spot as you wait for a new, better set of circumstances to emerge before you take that step. And the truth that turns that lie on its head is a principle that goes beyond this episode and deserves its own. It's one that I call the indifference of a situation. This principle tells us that circumstances are neither good nor bad. They just are. It's like being born male or female, black or white. Neither is good or bad. Neither is better than the other but choosing to see your situation as indifferent and even powerless to do anything by itself gives you the confidence to change it. The third lie that we believe is, I must follow the beaten path. I've had my share of weird and wacky business ideas, which I didn't act on because hmm, no one else had done it. I believed there was a template I needed to follow, so if my ideas were too unique or too far out, then it must not be valid. If this is you, please stop. This mindset is lethal to dreams because if you happen to be surrounded by the wrong people, such as a friend who shares the same limiting beliefs as you, he or she will encourage you to follow the beaten path. It's also rooted in insecurity. Other people's episode is a good one to listen again. I think that's episode four because it is a habit that's closely related to this mindset. When I first launched my UK business, I mentioned that I built the first website myself. Note that at the time, website building really was rocket science and I didn't have the funds to hire an expert, so I had to learn how to do it. I sent the completed website to a friend, sent her the link and asked for her opinion and she came back with a list of recommendations. In a nutshell, she wanted it to look less individual and more like a real business, (laughs) a serious retailer like Argos, for example. If I had followed her advice, I would have stripped away the intimacy and the coziness that the website offered and made it look more sterile and commercial. At the baby cut shop, we're not like everyone else. Our products are unique and they're different and the experience you have in our boutique is like no other. Thankfully, I became cured of it over time as I uncovered that limiting mindset and began to learn the, I guess, the antidote, which is living authentically. Now, here's the truth you need to know. You are a uniquely created being, inspired by God. In other words, God had a dream and you came true. The practice of authentic living has been the single most impactful principle in my life to date. And the day that I understood I was unique and different from every other person was the day I met the real me. At the Baby Cut Shop, most of our products are individually made to order. So when you purchase a cot bed, you must be prepared to wait for anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks. However, when you do receive your furniture, you will be pleasantly surprised because our quality is unmatched. The reason it takes so long is because 
full attention is paid to each individual piece. And we even have a range that's carved by hand, which means that no two pieces are identical. Now compare that to high street brands who mass produce their pieces in a country far, far away, (laughs) and each piece is identical to the next one. Here's more about that truth. You are a beautiful work of art. You were not mass produced. You were made individually by hand. God set aside time to craft you, just you. Your thoughts, your personality, your ideas are yours alone. Nobody thinks like you. And your fingerprints and your teeth marks are proof of your one of a kindness. And because you are unique, it means that your ideas will be unique and in some cases, never heard of before. So don't head for the beaten path. Create your own and blaze it. The thing about mindsets is this. You may have acquired it as a child. Perhaps you were told you won't amount to much or even as an adult going through an abusive relationship that went on for months or years too long. You may even have developed it because, like me, you listened too often and too long to someone who had a limiting belief. But here's the good news. Because those beliefs are lies, they exist mostly on the surface or the top floor or the topsoil of your mind. How do I know they're lies? Well, because anything that stops you or prevents you from fulfilling your purpose is a lie. It wasn't woven into you before you were born. So these lies are lying on the topsoil of your mind. This is the soft, easy to till soil. And even if it feels like the heat and the rain of the last however many years have baked it into place, I assure you it can still be removed. There are lies that have grown deep into your mind and in some cases professional help is needed to uproot them like using the services of a therapist. But then there are also truths that lie deep and they grow from the subsoil or the harder parts of your mind. These can't be uprooted because they were ingrained in you before you were born but they need watering. I water my mind with scriptures from the Bible because I'm a woman of faith. Some people water theirs with positive affirmations, some through meditation. Whatever you do, look after your mind every single day. When I sat down to list the mindsets that I had recognized as limiting, I stopped counting when I got to 15. But I'll share three more in episode 10. I want to pause and say thank you for the amazing reviews that have been coming in. And I'm going to share three of them. Quinty T, awesome podcast. What I love about this podcast is how real and authentic Tox is. She shares her life experiences in both her personal and business life. She explains the struggles she faced and how she overcame them. She has a genuine desire to help women across the globe. This podcast is worth a listen. And this is from Elle Quilt, a great listen. Talks you have such an amazing presence speaking on the podcast. I feel like I have a little guardian angel in the room. Some really great topics to explore. Thank you for your honesty. I really needed this, especially as a woman, mother, possibly business owner, trying to find my identity again. And here's one more from Espanaman. Yes, yes, yes. Raw, real and relevant. This podcast has given me life. Through it, I listen to your experiences, how you've overcome so many obstacles. You are enabling me to understand how to overcome the repetitive situations I find myself in. Most importantly, I am learning how to tackle these situations to ensure they're a theme of the past. I finish every episode eagerly waiting for the next. Please keep them coming. Listen, if you haven't added your review, please do head to iTunes, give it a rating, leave a comment, or let's catch up on social media. Either way, I really need to know your thoughts. And I have to say how humbled I feel and challenged at these comments because it means I've got to keep going. 
Thank you so much for listening and remember to leave always from the inside out.